Welcome back, this is Mr. Tipton, and today we are talking about theoretical and experimental probability. All right, theoretical probability is simply what could happen. What could happen, that's all it is. Experimental probability is a little bit different and is based on what has happened. Okay, you do experiments, um, you look at things that have happened, to make predictions about what you think will happen. Okay? Experimental probability is based on what's already happened. Theoretical is just what could happen. In theory, what could happen? Let's look at some examples. This says, Will flips a coin ten times. Seven times it landed on heads. First, we need to figure out what is the theoretical probability of flipping heads? Remember, theoretical is what could happen. Well, when, when Will or when anybody flips a coin, what could happen? What are the options? It either lands on heads or tails. All right? We're going to assume that a coin is probably not going to land on its side ever, so we're just going to go ahead and say that there are two options, either heads or tails. And how many, we're, we're asking the probability of flipping heads, how many of those two options are heads? Just one. So that's it. Our theoretical probability for flipping heads next time is one half, or, you know, 0.5, or 50%. Any of those are fine. Now, the experimental probability of flipping heads is a little different. Based on what Will has done so far, he has flipped the coin ten times, and seven times it landed on heads. Alright, so well, this can also be written as 0 0.7 or 70%. So these are going to be different a lot of the time. What could happen and what has happened are two different things. They're two different types of probability. Let's look at another. It says here a basketball player shoots 20 free throws and makes 18. Uh, TP, theoretical probability. What is the theoretical probability of making the next free throw? Well, when you shoot a free throw, what can happen? Two options. You can either make it, or you can miss it. And we are looking for the probability of making. So, one out of two things are making the next free throw. Two things could happen. One of them is making. The experimental probability, oh, and sorry, again, you can do 0.5 or you can do 50%. Um, now, the experimental probability, again, is based on what has happened. What has happened? Well, he's shot free throws 20 times and he has made 18. Okay, uh, we'll need to reduce that which is 9 tenths, 0 0.9, 90%, all the same thing. Uh, looks like it's pretty likely, very likely, that he will make his next free throw. He's made most of them, almost all of them. Based on what's happened, he or she will probably make the next one. But what could happen? Just two things, either a make or a miss. One more of these. It has snowed every day for a week. What's the theoretical probability of snow the next day? Two options, again. And what could happen? It could either snow, which is what we're looking for, or not snow. So one out of two, theoretical probability of it snowing is one half. The experimental probability of snow the next day, well, 
if it snowed every day for a week what's our experiment out of well it's out of seven there's seven days in a week and if it snowed every day that's seven out of seven which reduces to one which is a hundred percent experimental probability of snow the next day is 100 percent this is saying that it's absolutely for sure going to snow the next day but in theory it might not it could snow or it could not snow there's two different kinds of probability um, and usually weathermen weather people uh, use experimental probability when they say there's a a 70% chance of snow or a 30% chance of rain, they are going off of what has happened in the past when weather conditions are the same as they're going to be. Um, we can talk more about that tomorrow if you have other questions. Be sure and write them down, and we'll see you soon.